Hey guys, it's Floral Friday. We're having some fun with some greeneries in kind of a ball jar. This might be a little bit intermediate for some people, but I say give it a go. Um, I'll show you how to draw it, that I, you know, how I sketched it out and you know how I paint this. So you can interpret it any way you want to. If you want to challenge yourself, this is a good challenge to try. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave in the comments section. Also, don't forget to check out my Patreon. I have exclusive tutorials there weekly. Uh, a lot of cute tutorials with traceables that go with it. Um, also, I have the amazing art channel, which is the acrylic channel. Um, you can just hit that on my about page or my uh, in the description box. So again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. And also, don't forget to hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials are up. Like I said, it's a little intermediate, but you guys can totally do this. I have actually put some links um, in the description box of the other um, ball jars that I've done with summer florals. So more descriptive way to paint it, but you still can get it. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, all right, guys. So we're gonna go over supplies. This is a nine by twelve pad. Well, it's a piece of Archer's paper. So this is the green one, and it's a loose pad. Um, Got my paint brushes, my paints, I'll go over them as I use them. They're always in the description box. Um, just hit that word that says show more and it drops down and all the description is there and the um, links to them. I have my water jars up here. You can't see them, but they're in my little bell jars in here. And um, I'm gonna use a bunch of different brushes today. I have a tutorials already on how to draw a, a mason jar, basically, you know, you're going to be curving, curve, and then another one curve, and then little ones in here, and little bumps, right? And then you're going to curve out, curve out, and then you're going to do a cylinder down, I mean cylinder, line down, then you do a curve, and then another one like that. That's the inside of the jar. We're not going to be showing this part because we're going to have flowers, and then I'm going to have um, a bow, so you put another line here where the bow is, and you draw a bow, so like a little kind of not a square circle. And then you do, a, you know, most people can draw bows. I'm going to have two kind of like going like that, see? The bow. So it's just a long line here. And then, of course, the end of the bow. You can have your sticking out or going down. And then the flowers, you know, I'm going to do some anemones and then anemones. Basically, see that? It's like a half moon. Again, I'm going to do like one like that, like that. And then the center will be like here. And you can put a few in the back. And then, of course, the lines will look like that. And we'll have some greenery, just like this. I kind of like to sketch a little thing, couple of things out, but then paint intuitively. And then there'll be a rose here. You know, I make loose roses. I kind of paint them. I can't really show you how to draw a loose rose. It's just gonna be painted. I'll probably put another anemone out here. You know, another just loose flower here or so. And then some green that's gonna hang down. And some berries, and I'll put some, like the red berries you see out in the and some greenery, some pine. So that's just basically a stick, kind of like that. You can see that. So it's basically a pine, you know, line. And then you're going to paint brush little lines that go like this. And see the berries. Add whatever you want. Just have fun. So you can just see me. I'll talk about it as I go along. And I'm going to be painting a plaid on the bow. And how you paint the bell jar, um, bell jar, the ball jar. I have tutorials, the spring, summer ones in the ball jar. See, I'm just adding in some greenery. So I kind of lightly sketched out kind of where I want some flowers to go, similar to the sketch I just did for you. And I'll be using some of the oval brushes, um, the Princeton Neptune one, which is pointier, then the Robert Simmons, which is rounder. I'll always probably be using my long round. I might get a liner brush in, I might get a fatter brush in, but I'll put them all in the description box. You know, that's how it's gonna roll. Uh, I'm thinking we're gonna have whites, like peaches and reds and greens, all that kind of stuff. You could put in blueberries. The greens can be more on the blue tone and whatnot. 
So for the beginning, I'm going to make my anemone more like a light peachy white. So we've got this yellow here, the cabin yellow deep. Get it really watery. Grab some of this magenta. So you've got this peachy color. Really pale. You know, you can test it on your um, paper towel or a piece of scrap. If you have that, you're going to get this really watered down. It's looking a little too orangey. I want a very loose color. So I test it. I'm going to add more water to it. The more water I'll add, the lighter it'll get, and I'll dab it on the paper towel. And then I'm just going to throw in, you know, the peach petals. So I'm just doing these simple strokes. Let's see here. Kind of having this an anemone kind of like open compared to the other ones. Just like that. Really simple. Might want to throw in a little more yellow. It's a little too peachy. That's what I'm going to do with that. I could put a little more of the color in here, but I'm going to fill the center with more like a navy blue. And I had kind of sketched out one up here. It's a little too much pencil mark, so I'm going to erase some of the pencil marks. I'm going to balance it. And one that was even more white. So I might just pick up some of that paint color I just put down with a paper towel and just lift it up. It's getting too, too much color want the least amount of color. So again, another way you could do that is you just take your brush, this is the rounded, just put water on it itself, where you're gonna put the flower, and then you can go back in with that color, just kind of bleed it in. So you're not really putting in a full color in there. And it's just gonna bleed in the areas that you want. So it's just a slight peachy, pretty soft pinky kind of color. Now I have the the red, and I'm going to do the rose. I kind of sketched one up here, and again I'm going to turn the see I'm turning the um, the paintbrush kind of on its side. And do these little marks like that. And then push down, pull up. Then I do marks on the side like that. Push down, kind of pull in. So it's different kind of rows than the ones I do that have the dark center, but I can still do that. And add some dark tones to that. Some deeper red. Some button here. Careful not to hit that flower while it's still damp. So it's like a loose rose. See, I'm just putting some petals out here. Really simple, loose. I might go back in and add in some deeper tones. Now I had just sketched in just some of this greenery coming down with some berries, but I feel like I need another flower over in here. So I might add another rose in there. And I might use a different brush for that. So I'll grab my Princeton 8 long round. I just make the, mix up a red. Mix up a bunch of reds that you want to pick up. And again, little lines. See this is really deep dark and then I'm going to go in and see I'm just going around here like this. And then I can go in clean up my brush. Just grab the water itself and just kind of push the paint on the outside of it to get that loose rose. And it's looking a little too pink and I want it more burgundy color so I'm going to go in and grab some crimson with some Prussian blue. Maybe a little Van Dyke brown on there and I just get that more burgundy. 
is looking a little too peachy pink. I want a deep reddish rose. And I can go back on the one up here that I kind of finagled with the same brush. Go in and add some deeper tones. Again, some of the leaves out here. Just like that. I mean, this is not like a serious type of picture. I want it loose and fun. You know, I might uh, grab a little gray paint that I've mixed up. You can't really see this, but like a bluish gray. I have it in the big tin. When I did my special little sheep tutorial, it's on my Patreon. So I'm just going to do like a white outline flower here with the gray. Or you could do like tan color if you didn't want to do gray. Yellow, brownish. Same thing. Either one. Going towards the center, kind of like a magnolia type of flower. Just a four or five petal flower, simple like that. And then we go in and grab some yellow paint mixed in with some Van Dyke. And that would be the center. Huh? A little more yellow. Just kind of putting that color in there. We'll finagle the rest in a bit. Just want to get those colors in there. So then we're going to grab some, we're going to make some browns with the stems. So I've got my Van Dyke brown here. I'm going to mix a little black with that. And then start putting in some stems back here where I want my berries to go. Simple little berries. I think I'm going to put some over in here too. I sketch it going that way, but I think I want it going downward and outward. I constantly do that. I can change my mind because I can. So it's just kind of feeling it out. Grab some of this green, mix with some Prussian blue, a little more blue. You see that? And I'm going to go put a line down here because I'm going to start to build out some greenery. And out here. And here and out here. And then we're going to be doing some greenery over here coming down. So I have that beautiful, it's got a little frayed here, but the Princeton Neptune series oval. I think I've toil on it. And it's great to make simple leaves. Just pushing down and coming back. Not enough water on there. Doesn't want to cooperate today. That's fine. <laughs> so, just pushing down and connecting. Just simple like that. I'm gonna mix up some more of this paint. It wasn't watery enough, so it wasn't cooperating. And it needs to be bluer. So this pa paper is really thirsty, so you need to make sure that, that you get the right amount of water seeping in. So I'm just doing that simple movement with the brush. Nothing fancy. Again, pushing down and connecting. Same opposite, outward. Just like that. Just making the simple leaves. I'm going to add a little more blue. So I want some like bluish green tones. And then, you know, mix in some more bright green tones. So I might take this brush, just go like that, and put a nice leaf in there. And add one out here. 
right over the here, right over the flower. So you can do the dark over the light. You can't do the light over the dark because it's watercolor. Again, making some simple leaves coming down here. Just with this brush. And so the uh, evergreen, I might make a little brown in here, mix them with the green. And you just take the tip of this because it's very pointy. You can keep this, keep using the same brush and just make those little spikes coming off the stem to get your pine needle very simply and add it over here make it a little bit darker you can play around with adding a bunch of those as you go And once you get the paint really dark next to that cream color, um, it's going to really pop. So I'm going to add some really deep dark greens. I'm adding a little black to that just to cheat. So you're just adding some dark leaves right next to the flower. Just pops that flower right up. So you don't have to do all this work where you're kind of showing the shadows and whatnot. Kind of a cheat. And since this one over here, can't really see it. Same thing. Go ahead and add some dark greenery around it. That's so simple. And you can add some bright ones too. Don't be afraid to mix up the colors. See, I've got that bright. Gonna add some yellow to that. I'm going to have multiple tones of greens and I'm just taking the brush and just moving it around going out like this coming down around here just you know kind of pushing the paint around it's just that simple so we're going to keep playing with that as we go along we're going to start working on some of the elements down here which is the ball jar and the um, the bow, and we'll come back to the rest of this stuff. For that ball jar, it's usually like a turquoise color, so I have a peacock blue here. I'm just mixing some of this olive green. You can see that turquoise already coming together. I kind of test it on my um, paper towel to see if I like the color. I think that works pretty good. And you can add a little more blue if you don't like it, if it's too green. Just get a nice pretty turquoise or a bluish color. I get it fairly wet and watery up here. And that you see I'm dabbing in my paper towel. So I'm just gonna do initial wash of color. Still a little too dark. Tap it on my paper towel and just go down the side of the line that you drew and then down here, putting in some, that's where the bow is going to be, so you want to put some of the lines up in here. We could have actually painted that first because the greens are dark enough they can go over it, but that's okay. Now this is where the bow is going to be right in here in the red. So we're just going to wash in some color here, and I'm going to add the greeneries. Gonna wash in some of this blue. So it's kind of like a skinny oval. Now I'm gonna concentrate on throwing in some stems, right, that we didn't do before. So get that brown. Most of the green would have stems that are brown or green. Put some in here. And get some greenery. Some could be thicker or skinnier. Crisscrossing. They would show through the top. They wouldn't show through this this part because it's going to be the um, the bow. Just 
and mixing a little blue and brown together. Get a nice dark stem. You don't have to go too crazy putting stems in here. You know, you would put in as many as you think that the, the painting would allow for the amount of greenery we have, you know, and where we'd be going. See how I'm stopping right here? That's where the, the bow is gonna be. And you always do this crisscross kind of situation here. And the thickness should vary also in the stems. It would look kind of strange if they were all the same thickness. So I'm kind of like making some both thick and others not. If that makes any sense. So for now, we're going to leave that. Now we're going to mix up some more reds. We're going to make plaid. This is kind of too pinky. I'm going to add some of this cabin yellow deep. Make this red red. Got a nice red in here. This is kind of a pinky red. We're going to have a more red red coming in here for the bow. All right, so we've drawn out the bow. We're going to put in our plaid. Just like that. I'm going to do some nice red going down. Another red going down here. And eventually we'll cross it with the red itself. Kind of curve it with the with the actual way the bow is going itself. So then I'm going to put some red going across here, connecting again here, keeping them kind of far apart wide because I'm going to add some other colors. And of course, there's a knot in the middle. I didn't see, you didn't see the um, opening of this one here. This, there's the opening for that. And I'm going to add the plaid here. It's, if you add it on the end, you can see the, the plaid a little better. Otherwise, you have to add like a um, an outline with black or something like that so you can see it. So then going to add the crisscross. I could have made it a little bit wider, but I decided not to. Because I'm going to add some other colors. Now you can see here I have the little V's going here. So if you have that drawn in also, you're just kind of painting around it. See, I'm just adding that in there. Little V's. And then the crisscross. This one needs to come up a little more. Okay, so you've got your plaid red part. While that's drying, oh, we didn't do this part. So you also need to connect it where the plaid goes here on the vase. So it's very loose. Don't don't get caught up in that it's you know not looking right. Meanwhile, we can add some of this brighter red berries. Oh, this is drying. This paper towel is very wet. Um, up over into where the brown is. A little halo. That one got a little wet. That's okay. You might need a smaller brush to have like more control. Even those are going to be really loose, but it's nice to have some control. So you know you're just painting round berries very simply throughout where the branches are, and it doesn't have to be red. You could make the blue, navy type berries if you want to do that, but I chose to do some red berries. Just to add a little more red. And some bigger ones would be going down here and would put some stems connecting those to the greenery. Did 
these could have the little black dots in the center. Just adding some more reds. You want to put them all throughout. Now, and you can add some more browns and a little bit of a. Uh, gonna move some of this brown over, the green. Gonna connect some of this green that I didn't do here. Little darker greens. So you've got two tones in here, just mixing up in the berries. Um, I would add in some more like yellow, beigey, browns, tans, just to, to change it up. So I've got this mustardy kind of yellow. You can make like a, just some sprays coming out here. So it's not just all red and green. Put some mustard sprays in there. And there's the bow. We're going to paint over the bow once it gets to the nice dry. We can go in and add the other color tones which would be a dark green, grab whatever dark green you can make. So you can do this in between every other red, right? Every other red. And then crisscross next to the red. This one won't have it. This one's still wet. I'm gonna have to wait for that one. And then um, again, you could use the beige too. So I have that beigey brown. Kind of reminds me of like a Burberry kind of plaid. Mix up a nice beige. I'm testing it on my paper towel. It's a little on the yellow side. Okay. We can put, well, it's a little wet, so I'm gonna have to wait till that green dries. Meanwhile, we can make like the inside of the bow. You know, it's gonna be gray. It's the part that's not seen on the outside. Just draw in a little gray right here just like that and I'll put a little deeper darker color towards the center and towards the edge this is still wet so we're going to work on the anemones um, you might want to go in and add just a little bit of see that's that peachy color some shadows just pushing out the tip of this brush outward. See how I'm doing that? Just these little lines that go outward from the center. It's going to give it that anemone kind of look. Same thing over here. And this is kind of like a yellowy peachy color. It's very pale. You could do the same with this little whitish flower I did in here. adding some of these lines and I'll add the center part which would be like a nice navy color so I'm mixing my Prussian with some black and then we have that black center with a little halo and then you do the little lines here if it's bleeding too much when I put that color in just lift it up like that but I kind of like that look so you want more concentrated color when you're doing that. The little dashes. Again with this one, same thing. Let's see how wet it is. Yeah, it's a little too wet. But you just put the little ones separated more. And you get the little anemone dashes there. I like how it bleeds like that. Just looks a little more authentic. 
Then you play around with the reds. I'm going to get that color in here and get a really deep red color tone. Playing around with that to get it really deep crimsony red. Just want to get those roses a little bit darker. I'm adding some of that deep red. Put a little more gent down there. Just another bit of the darker red. And you can put some of that red, deep red highlight on the bottom of the berries just to give it some oomph. On the side, and where the um, red meets the other red on the bow, you want to just get a deeper tone red right in there, just like that. brush and I'll add that green that I didn't add before and then I try and add the beige I'll let this dry a little bit right next to the red beige yellow color and then crisscross that color just like you did the other ones And then when it's dry, we're going to add a little black lines to that. So while we're doing that, we can go back and add some more greenery coming out here. Add some stems. Just get a little wild and go over the bow now. And then more greens overlapping, coming down, coming outward. Another leaf here. And then some going out here. And you can do some like rounded, like you eucalyptus type leaves. Change it all up. See, I'm doing those like rounded leaves out here. And I'm getting some deep next to that white flower. Another deep petals or sprays. So it stands out. Some more over here. That kind of washed out, so we're gonna go in and fix that and put some more color in there. Just keep adding and adding and adding till you feel like, oh, I've got what I wanted. You know, it still kind of looks a little pale. If you heard that, that's my chair. I stand up to see if I like what I see. So I'm going to go in and add just a few more around these flowers and some more tonal colors in here. Just a little. Just to pull it out a little more. Just a little bit. It feels a little too pale and just a little more darker colors. But pretty much you get that. And you can go in and add the green in here to pull out the flower. See, I'm just taking some greenery and just throwing in some greens just coming over here too. It's just going to look like wild and kind of fun. And not this way. Pretty much that's it. Okay, and then we have to work on the jar. Just a little bit more. So now we're gonna add more blues and that jar.
get a little darker and we can wash in the blue color it's like a blue gray color it's a little too turquoisey I might add a little more blue gray and wash in just like dry brushing see I'm just going like this over the, the center of the jar and adding some of that deep blue down in here so you can really see the jar the blue again under here under where the bow is and here so you'll still see some white but not too much you're not going to see excuse me sorry um, it's looking a little too white up in here which wouldn't make sense right because it's going to be dark with the shadow so I'm going to add some deeper blue and you got the shadow and same thing up in here maybe much deeper and lighter down there again we can add get even darker with that blue just on that side because it's going to have a shadow pull it down a little bit and then again under the bow it's going to be a shadow right the bow is going to create kind of a shadow in here and here with some dark blue gray and just building up that whole entire jar and a little bit more again I'm going to grab some of that Prussian blue I'll mix a little gray black in there and get it even darker just like that and then some up in here where the jar is so you're going to keep playing around like here I can see as I'm standing up I want even darker tones in here just pulling that out you know I can grab very bright yellow and go in here and add some greens but pretty much it's kind of there I mean I need a little green right over here so that flower stands out but that's it that's how I do it <laughs> that's how I roll I'll keep going in and I'll add a few more greens with this brush playing around with you know maybe some more sprays of this um, yellow a little red so it's more brown mustardy kind of color I can even add some gray sprays that would look pretty some bluish gray sprays or brownish gray sprays right out here you know play around with how you want to do it that's pretty much the uh, the floral that we're going to work on today I'm going to go right in here and add some Prussian blue just really just put the blue right in there and you can make the little veins on the on the leaves put it in here too make that jar stand out a little more and underneath the rose because you really wouldn't see white in there you might see it out here and put some more of the pines coming outward even over the bow and then for the bow go in and just add some like gray shadow Again, we are the not a oh, little blackish color here meets the bow. So I put some almost black color where the knot, and I'll put the black around here like an outline, and I'll pull it down so you can actually see. It makes more sense. And again, out here. Where the bow is in the shadow. Just keep adding and adding and adding. And then you could add that black line I didn't do 
a skinny little line crisscross it so it looks like kind of like a Burberry plaid you know that's simple so it's a little long tutorial sorry guys <laughs> um, again well that's drying because it kind of bled you can go back in and add the little darker color get that stem in there and this one too and there you go that's the um, floral Friday Christmas version I'm going to add a little shadow out here just with a nice pretty bluish gray color just take the gray don't hit the whole thing going that way just on the side over here just like that and then here we have a cut off to the middle. And that's that. And if you can have some, like, it'd be kind of pretty if you put some, just a couple little berries, like just lying, like on the ground here. Put in a little sprays. This brush is not working for the round scenario. Take that brown. Just like that. And then of course because there will be a shadow next to that, we put a little gray, just a little bit coming out from where the berries are as well. And now we add just a teeny bit of the green coming out. You want to add some like evergreen greenery, like pine needles. Simple like that. So there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed the Floral Friday Christmas version. <laughs> I know it might be a little difficult, a little more advanced, but you know, I'm trying to push you guys. You guys can do this. I've got lots of tutorials on how to do the ball jar and then the, the, the plaid. Just play around with that. Um, have any questions leave them in the comment section take care guys and have a fantastic weekend don't go crazy enjoy yourself have some hope you know there's a lot going on right now in the world and just take a deep breath and just paint and you'll let the stress go away all right take care and i'll speak to you soon